Today I've got some fun Halloween DIYs. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. All right, so we're going to start off with this black easel. I think at one time this came from the Target dollar spot. You can get something similar to this probably at Dollar Tree. But I've had it for a very long time. So I'd already done a bit of work on it beforehand just to try to figure out how to cover up that green. And so I've just removed that paper and I'm going to get some Halloween themed paper. This little pack I got from, I believe, Dirt Cheap, but you can get any type of scrapbook paper or wrapping paper or anything that you want. You could even use wallpaper if you wanted to. And you're just gonna fit it in there. Mine's a little bit short, but I'll show you in a minute how I fix that. I'm just going to press down to get a good edge so I can see where I need to trim. All right, so I'm gonna put it back down in here and decide where I wanna put my extra piece of paper. And then when I've decided, I'm gonna put my double stick tape down. You can get that pretty much anywhere. You can definitely get it at Dollar Tree. By the way, you can also get decorative paper at Dollar Tree as well. And then you're just going to find your length and glue it or tape it down. Okay, now I'm making a selection of ribbons here, and I like the little black and white. I think it's, it's cute for some cutesy Halloween decoration, so I'm just going to trim that down and use it to kind of trim out my frame here. Okay, you see me using hot glue? Don't do that. You'll see in a minute why I should not have used hot glue here. This is just a plain ribbon, it's not wired or anything. Well, it was crooked when I put it down and that drives me nuts. So then, oh, look what I did. See, when I pulled it off, I really messed it up. So I'm gonna fix it and I'll show you how. I'm gonna flip it upside down and I left this in here and didn't edit it out because I want you to see, even if you think that you've destroyed something, you really can kind of fix it. Yeah, so my ribbon didn't cover it, so I'm gonna add another piece of ribbon on there. Could have used another strip of the black and white, but I wanted to use some of this because it's similar to the color that's in the center, that golden yellow color. So I just used double stick tape for all that ribbon. And then I'm using some hot glue on the back of my little candy corn. And this is part of a three pack of, I don't know if it's chipboard or what it is, but it is um, kind of thick. You can use anything for that. And I got that from, I think, Michael's many, many years ago. It's been in my scrapbook, actually, collection. So I'm gonna take 16 inches of ribbon. You'll see me at the bottom. I have a little tape measure strip down there that's a foot long. So I'm gonna do 16 inches to make some ribbons to put on here. I'm going to do the simple little ribbon that you've seen me do a thousand times, so I don't want to go through that again, but just like tying your shoes, that sort of thing. And just make a little simple ribbon, a little simple bow. And then I'm going to do the same thing with that kind of golden yellow color. Because I'm going to use both of those because I want to bring in the yellow that I have on the bottom, that strip of ribbon that I put on top of the black and white to cover up my boo-boo. So I'm going to use this along with it to look like it was intentional and no one will ever know. All right, so I know that I want it up there on the side, not in the center. I'm gonna put down some hot glue and then add one bow at a time. Mm 
once you get them in place, you have plenty of time to go in and trim up your bows. You can do some dovetailing if you want to, whichever one that you like. And I just like to use these clips that came from Dollar Tree just to hold my things, especially things with any bulk in place while they're gluing down. So that's what the clip's for. I took some old Dollar Tree Halloween stickers that I've had forever, and I've just used a little trick or treat in the cute little font and put that right there on my candy corn. So once we've given time for the bows to get themselves and adhered down, you just take your clip off and it is done. Isn't it cute? It's so simple, so simple. You could also do this with just a, a frame if you wanted to. Yep. Once again, I am so very grateful for you for coming to my channel, for subscribing. Please leave me a comment below what you think about this and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye. I have a thrifted painted black box here and I have a yard sign that came from Target last year. So I'm not gonna use the pick part or the stake part. I'll just put that aside for something else. What we're gonna use is the house. And I love how the white trim and the white accents on this house stand out against all of the black. I'm going to use some of this table scatter or vase filler from Dollar Tree. They are black and orange and glittery and you can get these in different colors. And I'm going to alternate the larger black with the one size down smaller orange. But you can do all the same color, whatever you want to do. Um, you might want to do a dry run first to see what size is going to fit so you don't get to the end and have a big gap. It is just a craft though, you know, these homemade things, they don't always end out, end up like we plan for them to. So um, sometimes we have happy accidents, but you can always, you can always fix things. And if you just use a little bit of glue here, then you could always pull these off and fix it if you need to. I love how the orange and black just kind of remind me of like a, like a carnival booth or something like that. Okay, so in order to, since we're going to have this box standing up, in order to get these on here in the right position that it will stand up straight, I've stood the box up like it's going to be when it's completed, and I'm just gluing these down. Now, just a little bit of glue, because you do not want to glue your project to the table. The glue is actually sticking to the, the ball that's next to it, and a little bit on the edge of the box. My box came from Goodwill, but you can get yours, anything, um, maybe at the Dollar Tree, you can get them at Dollar General. You know, you can get these just about anywhere. You can get them at the craft store and paint them yourself. Mine just happened to have already been done, so it was perfect, made my life a little easier. Okay, so the glue has set up. I'm just removing some of those little webs that come out of there. Look how cute that is. Ugh, I love it. And there's nothing wrong with being proud of your work, either. It's gonna be in your house. You want it to be something that brings you joy and makes you happy, so, you know, let it make you happy. Be proud of it. So, this is going to be raised, which I love. And thankfully, those little spots were on the back where the steak would slide in, and it made a perfect little riser to put some hot glue on to put this down in the box. All right, so now I know I wanna have a little sign over here. This came in a three pack from Dollar Tree and they are metal. I like this one and I want to paint it. So you can get paint at Dollar Tree. It's just an acrylic paint. I have some paint here that came from Hobby Lobby and I got it on sale 50% off at one time. I think it's pumpkin orange. I'm just going to take my Dollar Tree brush and I'm just going to dab this on. You can brush it on if you want to, but I, I've done it both ways and I always prefer this method of just dabbing it on there or pouncing it on, however you, however you want to name that word. 
So it's gonna cover the entire thing. Just one layer, I don't mind a little bit sticking out because it looks kind of old, so I don't mind that. And then I'm gonna set it aside and let it dry. There's my son back talking, carrying on a conversation with me, checking out what's going on. Okay, so now I wanna trim this box and I'm going to use this ribbon that I got from Goodwill. You could probably find something like this at Michael's. It's the perfect uh, width to cover the sides of this box. So I'm gonna cut a strip off here and just use a little bit of hot glue to place it down. You know, it's odd the things that seem to make people happy. Well, I think it is for me anyway, because you know, I had so much, uh, I don't know. I was so thrilled when my ribbon pattern matched up perfectly once I got it put down. I mean, I was smiling about it and I thought to myself, you know, it, it's really not that big of a deal, but it is kind of a big of a deal if you can find joy in the small things in life and something like that made me smile and hey, you know, that's okay. I'm not hard to please apparently. Matching paper patterns and matching ribbons and I don't know. Maybe it's just the kid in me that never grew up. And it's on the bottom, so you'll never be able to see it really, but I knew in my head that it matched, and that made me happy. Okay, so now we got our ribbon border down there, and it is looking really good, I think. Yep, it's coming together. Here is my dried sign. I'm just gonna use a little hot glue and put that down and I've placed the edge of that E in the little gap between those balls there. Be careful because these do get hot. And I just wanted to mention, I didn't do it because I couldn't find my lights, but you could easily put some string lights around the house or whatever item that you put on the inside because there's definitely a space between the back of the house and the box so it would fit there and then you could have the battery pack on the back and you could light it up and that would be so cute so I was playing with my kids there and making it dance around we like to listen to Halloween music when we craft but this is it what do you think I think it looks cute I hope you subscribe because I got more coming and lots more holidays of all sorts coming Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye. Beginning footage was damaged. So I've just had to piece these together for you. I'm gonna start off with letting you know that the materials that we're using are all from the Dollar Tree. We're going to use a variety of these mesh rolls. I've chosen black and orange. I'm using 12 inch pieces and we're going to make little rolls and bundles of three. First, I'll show you how to make them. Then you can stop the video and go ahead and make those and get them ready for the next step. So here's our tie or our pipe cleaner. I'm gonna cut that in half. The little clamp is from the crafter's corner, crafter square. So we're just gonna roll this up we're going to put the frayed edge, the cut edge, to the bottom. First the black, then the orange, and then another black. Actually what I have on my wreath is the black and orange combination rather than the orange, but I ran out for the demonstration. I'm just going to show you on the orange mesh. Okay, so if you can see there, that's about as big around as a quarter. All of my rough edges are on the bottom. Now I'm just gonna squeeze these together in my fingers. I'm gonna press them down into the middle of that stem and then give it a twist.
Okay, so you're going to need at least 18. You can do more than that if you want your wreath to be more full. Here is your wreath form. You're going to put these on the one of the two outermost rims there. And you're going to cover just like this. Okay, if you look in the top corner, I'm going to show you how to make the little bundles that I have below. I'm going to take two pieces of ribbon that are 12 inches a piece, dovetail your end. Take a piece of the black mesh tubing, put it in the center, take the other half of that chenille stem, wrap it around the middle, and there you have your bow bundle. I used five of these bow bundles on my wreath. What I'm showing you first is when I already have the the little truck sign attached to it but I'm going to show you an alternative in just a minute where we put the wreath underneath and we put the sign directly on top when it's underneath like this you can't really see all the details of it being a truck and to me I didn't really care for that I really wanted to see the details and see that it was a truck so I'm going to show you in a minute what it looks like if you put that on the top it's easy to remove it's attached with well, you'll see the mechanics in a minute there's no glue on that sign okay I'm fluffing out my bows here just to make sure that the wreath is good and full I'm trying to place these ribbon bundles since there are five of them um, there are five or six of them. I'm trying to put them in a pattern that they're evenly spaced out. You can use whichever ribbons that you like. I just thought that because it was the little black truck sign, it would be cute with the pumpkin in the middle to have a ribbon that coordinated with that. So to see from the back side, I'm using the second to the outermost piece of the frame there to twist on the bundle and then I'm just pressing all those stems inward. Be sure that you fluff them out well. Okay, so then I've decided that in the center I want to add a bigger, more statement piece of a bow. So I'm taking some shoelace bows. I have three of those. They are about a foot and a half long each piece of cording. These are really cool. At first I didn't know exactly what to do with these, but then I thought, you know, these are, they really do give another um, bit of depth and dimension to your projects. So I went ahead and decided to stack these up and see what it would look like. Now the bows that I had already made, the little bow bundles, I'm gonna do this the same way. These are going to be 12 inches each, dovetailed. And there's the spiderweb sparkly orange and I'm gonna stack it put the three bows on top and then take a piece of that Chanel um, cleaner pipe cleaner thing and I'm gonna twist it around the middle and that's gonna go in the front center if you don't get a good look at that in this video you will see it in the pictures that um, that I have going to secure that on and since we haven't glued these mesh bundles on here you can slide them around until you get the right fit and you get them where you want them to be so this is what it looks like and there's my bow in the bottom now alternatively you can see how I've got the the pipe cleaners on the back with the that's hot glue and a piece of ribbon that's how I attached them on the back you can lay it on the top line it up so my big bow in the bottom and my bow at the top, that's how I'm lining it. Then I'm just going to take these, feed them through the inside. As you can see there how I've attached it. Um, so there we go. I want to cover up the holes where the hangers were. So I'm going to use a little hot glue there. Be careful not to burn your fingers. I didn't want to compress it with a clamp because then it would smash down my tubing so I just lightly laid my scissors on top and now it's all covered up and so what do you think do you like it I like it much better like this 
give me a big thumbs up if you're enjoying these videos. I'd love it for you to comment below and tell me what's your favorite so far. I'll see you again soon. Bye. All right, I'm going to start off with two long, narrow picture frames that I got from the thrift store. I believe it was Goodwill. I've already taken out the backing and wrapped that with some black and white uh, wrapping paper that I had and just taped it. Taped it down. Now I'm just going to clean up the back just a little bit, tear off all that extra paper that was already on there, and start using my pliers to pull out all those little metal pieces that hold the glass in place. All right, so when you see on the other side, this is a faux wood. And I'm going to take this Rust-Oleum chalked paint and a linen white and give it three coats each. All right, so we have materials for two signs, and we are going to start off with these little bottle, I guess they're little bottle labels that you can get. They originally came from... Target, and so did the the chipboard stickers. So on one side they have a little like a sticker peel and stick thing. I just went ahead and cut that off. And I'm going to use my double stick tape to place these down. By the way, I got all of these from Dirt Cheap for maybe 40-50% off. Okay, so I'm just going to put that down in the center. And I'm going to start figuring out what the placement should be for my stickers. And these particular ones have glitter, but the Hocus Pocus are just a solid matte white. So I'm just going to use a ruler. If you put these down lightly, just lay them on the paper. You can move them around. But once you stick them down, they are not coming off without tearing the paper. So just a little warning, use a very light hand with this. If you don't have these, you can use um, stickers that you can get from Dollar Tree or any other store. You probably have something that would work already in your stash. And certainly you can make a, use construction paper or a, um, some white paper to just make some type of a layover to put on your frame if you wanted to. If that's all you got. All right, I wanted to change the placement up just a little bit on my letters there. And there's my cute little pumpkin. And now I know this is where I want them to stay. I'm going to press them down. Now they're permanent. Okay, moving on to the next. Same thing. I'm going to cut off that little sticky strip. You don't need that. I'm going to use my double stick tape and just put a few pieces down to stick it on here. By the way, that double stick tape is permanent. You have to be careful, they are so sticky and they are stuck down so well that you will, on occasion, maybe break these. I've certainly cracked a few and I have broken some on a different project, but the good news is you can glue them back together. You can make them work. So, I'm just going to move these down a little bit. And there you go, Hocus Pocus. Again, if you're not sure of your placement, just lay them on first gently, and then you can move things around. But if you press them down, they're not gonna come up. These little hats came from Dollar Tree. Okay, so now I want to embellish this and give it some finishing touches, and I have these from back in the scrapbooking days. They're just little pieces of glittery, I guess, trim, and I really like them a lot. I thought they, they look really good for Halloween, and they look nice for the, the content, for the Hocus Pocus and the Trick or Treat. Gives it a little bit of whimsy. So you just put your stickers on there any way you want. If you don't have these stickers, you can use a marker or a pen 
and just draw them freehand on your own. And you could certainly skip this step if you wanted to, to just leave it like it was. I have so much left out of my scrapbook stuff that I have had for so many years that it is nice to be able to use it finally. I mean, all the stuff that I bought was stuff that I liked anyway, so it's good to put it to use finally. So if you have some old stuff, drag it out, get out the old art set, and use it. Save yourself a lot of money. And you'll be using the items that you loved enough to purchase in the first place. Okay, so now everything is where I want it to be. I'm just gonna press it all down good. Here are my frames. They are white now. I painted the sides, the inside rim, and the tops. But I wasn't too concerned about the back because it's gonna be against the wall. So I'm just going to seat this down in here and make sure that I have a good fit and it fits nicely. No need to use the glass. We're just gonna put that aside for whatever else we might need it for. I'm gonna take some hot glue. It is the Gorilla Glue, so it gives a more permanent bond. And I'm just going to put that down in each corner. You don't want to put too much because then when you put your picture down, it will squish out and make a little ugly bleb on the front. And we want this to look nice. So we're going to turn it over and snug it back down in there. Just press it down gently. Again, you don't want to squish anything out. You want it to look nice and finished. I think maybe someone had used these frames for a DIY of their own because that gold over there did not match the white backing that was on the other frame. But you know, you can use whatever. And if you find the frames at a thrift store and they don't have backing, it's easy to make a backing with um, pieces of cardboard, maybe an old box that you have, or some of that foam board that you can get from Dollar Tree works really well as well. All right, and so since this hanger was on the short side and I'm not going to be using it like that, I'm going to have to make some means to hang it on the wall. So this is an easy process. You're gonna decide whether you wanna do it in the middle or on the sides, and I've chosen to do it on the sides. So I am cutting my pipe cleaner into four pieces. I'm just going to make a little hairpin shape Put that on the side and low enough down that you can't see it when it's on the wall. I'm going to put down some glue, then the little pipe cleaner. There's my little spatula. It's silicone, so it works really nicely. And then I'm going to put a piece of just extra cardboard that I had around and put that down on there. That's going to help hold it in place. You're gonna do the same thing to the other one. Be sure that you put it down under the edge if you don't want that showing. And I certainly do not want that showing. I want it flush on my wall. Just reloading that glue gun. And that is all you have to do. See there? Then you just put your little pins or hangers or nails in the wall and you can just turn them around and hang them up. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, so here's our finished, gorgeous farmhouse Halloween pictures. What do you think? You like these? I love them. Yep, I cannot wait to take my Halloween things out and put them on the wall. I cannot wait. I'll be doing an unboxing of my Halloween decor soon, so you guys subscribe and stick around to watch that. Give me a like on this video if you're digging this farmhouse style, and I hope to see you again very soon. Bye!
Okay, so I have a thrifted 10 inch wreath. I think you can get something similar to this at Dollar Tree, if not the same thing. And I'm gonna have three different pieces of coordinating fabrics. These are, I think, just cotton fabric. And if you just start with a little snip, you can just tear a straight line all the way up your fabric. So these pieces are somewhere around an inch a piece wide and about 18 to 20 inches long. These are just scraps that I already had from projects last year. And it takes absolutely no special skill to make this wreath. It is easy but colorful and festive and the cutest thing for a farmhouse style Halloween. So we're gonna do the same thing with the other two patterns. So I have black with orange polka dots, white with what, well, orange with white polka dots. And then I have another pattern that you will see in just a minute. So I'm just taking these, removing some of the loose threads. I'm gonna put it under and pull it through the loop. You can just pull on it a little bit and it'll tighten it up around there. No need to use any glue for that. So you'll see later that you can see some of the green foam when I make the wreath. If you want this to be completely um, not seen at all, you can either paint your wreath form first or you can put your strips closer together, which would require more strips. And I did not count ahead of time, so yeah, I can't give you those numbers. But you just keep tearing your scraps and until you get enough. And if you don't have enough, then you just keep tearing once you get some of your pieces already on there. Okay, so the other pattern is the orange and white Harlequin. And I'm just gonna alternate with black in between the orange and white pieces. When I lay this down on the table, and I lay it in half, I am sure to have the non-pretty side up so that when I pull it through, it actually shows on the outside. Did you see the, the back side of the fabric is what you see, and I put it through, and then the pretty side is on the outside. Simple, nothing to it. You're just gonna keep doing this. There's my little witch friend. You're gonna keep doing this until you get it as full as you like. You can let those bands overlap one another or you can give them a little more space, whichever one you like. Okay, so here is the full wreath and you can see some green showing through there. That doesn't bother me at all, not one bit. As a matter of fact, once you get to playing around with the, the strips of fabric enough, you can just about cover the entire thing. See how you just slip them around because they're not glued. You can just move them down and I think it looks cute. Nothing is perfect. There's some pieces of thread sticking out. Some pieces are longer than others, but that's, that's great. It's rustic, it's country, and it's the style that I like. Okay, so now we want to put some embellishments on it, and I usually cut this part out during editing, but I want you to see my thought process and see what your options could be. The jack-o'-lantern and this bat were both pieces that were broken off of a Target um, Bullseye Playground stake from last year, and I just sanded the backs down, and um, so those would be two pieces that could be options to put on here, and I, of course, chose the bat. I think he coordinates nicely. And then this is also one of those things from Target from last year. It's like in a little, maybe metal or enamel sign. This is a little sign that I had forever. It used to have a base on it where you could stand it up. It's a little chalkboard sign. And then from the Dollar Tree, they have these metal signs that you could use. 
And these can also be painted, so that makes it um, even better if you want to coordinate your colors. So I'm just getting an idea of what might look cute, what I might like. And finally, I have decided that yes, the spirit lane is the sign that I want on this wreath. So I'm just gonna put it down with some hot glue. You could use pipe cleaners if you wanted or any other way that you wanna fix it on there. But this is what, this is what works for me today. And I'm pressing and moving my fingers because it's very hot. That metal gets hot, so be very careful about that. You can use your little fingertips if you want to. And then this little bag of scatter came from Dollar Tree. Just little glittery um, spheres of different shapes, well, different sizes. And there's some little bitty black ones. And I'm gonna use those to cover up the holes on the ends of these signs. It's almost like a little street sign. But they're barely noticeable once you get the sign, once you get the, um, the wreath hanging up. But there it is, cute as can be. If you're new, I hope you subscribe and come back and see more content. You'll be notified if you do subscribe and hit the little bell. Give me a like if you're enjoying these Halloween videos. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you again real soon. Bye. Okay, to start with, I'm gonna make the chain garland that's gonna go around. And I'm just gonna take three different kinds of ribbons and cut them into four inch strips. These came from, uh, two of the ribbons came from Dollar Tree and then the one with the little ghost and the boo over there, I think originally came from Target and I believe that I got that at Dirt Cheap. So I have a little measuring tape there on the edge of my table. I'm just measuring off my strips. We're not going to do anything special to the edges of this. We're not going to dovetail them or anything like that. Just cut them straight across. All right, so now we're going to start the chain. We're going to start with one loop. You can use any pattern that you like. I've got my little fingertips to protect my fingers from the glue. I got those from Dollar Tree in the crafter section. Just going to add a dot of glue and then I'm overlapping maybe a quarter of an inch, somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. I'm not gluing the chain to itself, I'm gluing each link. So there's some movement in there if you see that. So I have an orange, a black, and a white. And I've decided for my pattern that I want to have a black link between every one. So there'll be a black and a white and an orange, black, white, orange, sort of like that. Just be really careful with the glue. So a lot of opportunities to burn your fingerprints off. I guess you could use a, a little mini stapler if you wanted to on this. I'd probably make it quicker and but then it, it also might snag on the other pieces of ribbon and that's just a mess. I always have my glue gun over there. It's very easy for me to hook up and every time I come down to craft I go ahead and plug it in whether I think I need it or not. Abracadabra, there's the chain. All right. And then I have a bow that I am making now, and these are in six inch strips. I did three of each of the same colors as a chain. Then I'm just going to stack these up. This is easy, you've seen this bow before. Got just a piece of twine here that was left over from something else. 
You're gonna hold these firmly and bunch them together. If you don't hold them tight, they're just gonna stack and you're gonna lose your shape. So hold them tight and then kind of squinch them up together in your fingers. All right, so I'm making my tie. See, I'm gonna hold that with my index finger and there you go. Now the bow can be pulled apart and fluffed out a little bit. I don't know if you actually call this a bow. Is this a bow? I don't know. I think it's a bow. Okay, so next I'm just getting my other little things I want to use as ornaments. And I have some of these little pumpkins left out of this pack. And they came from, I think, Dollar General. And then these, I believe, were originally from Target. And here are my two white Christmas trees. Yes, they are Christmas trees. If you use one, it is gonna be very sparse. So we're gonna put two together. I'm gonna to show you how to do that the easiest way I can, I can imagine. I've seen people put them together at the same time and fluff them out, but nope, I think this was easier. It worked better with the way I think. So you're gonna leave it flat on one side and you're gonna fluff everything out and upward. So see, I have it laying flat and everything is gonna come up. All right, and we're gonna do the next one. Leaving one side flat and everything coming up and out. Now you have two halves of the tree flat on one side so you can easily put them together. So I'm gonna use my zip ties to do this. See, there's the flat sides, and look there. Look at that full tree. Yes, $2 at Dollar Tree, there you go. You can also use the same idea for Christmas. Gonna zip tie in three places. Gonna do the middle, and then you'll see me do the top. And the toward the bottom or what would be the trunk area you're going to trim off your excess these are white zip ties and you really don't even see them in the tree they just kind of disappear after you get them in that white tree I don't want this to fall over or fall apart so you know maybe you don't need as many ties as I use but you know you do you okay so one of these trees are a little bit longer than the other one so I have enough room to put it back on the base and I'm just gonna sit it down in there and yep I like that I think that'll work so I'm gonna add lights to the tree these lights I've had for a long 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 time I don't even know originally where they came from you can get these at Dollar Tree you can get all kinds of cute ones with bats and skeletons and pumpkins you do whatever you like to do be sure that you test them before you put them on your tree though because it's a pain in the behind to have to take them all back off you want to put the lights in first because you don't want to have anything else interfere with your lights then I'm going to put the chain on I could have made the chain a lot longer and it would have been a lot thicker but that is not what I was going for so you know all right, these little pumpkins have a hole in the bottom. I'm cutting pieces of a Chanel stem that is also orange and just a little hot glue and putting that right in the bottom. I'm going to twist these onto the tree, but you can also hot glue directly onto the tree and you'll see that here shortly. So I'm gonna space these out around the tree and just twist them on and push them down on the branch so they sit still. Okay, these are some picks that I had, some type of a decorative pick. I just cut the little fluff off. They're kind of, uh, they're, I would say glittery, but they have some shiny, spiky areas, and they look really cute. And then here is some table scatter or vase filler from Dollar Tree. You get a ton in that bag. They are glittery. There's a little fallout, but it's not too bad. 
And I just want to put those directly onto the tree. Just a little dot on the bottom. And if you need to, and you're sloppy with your glue, you, you use too much glue maybe, you want to use those little pink fingertips again to protect yourself. Because it will get hot and burn you if you're not careful. So we're just going to keep going like this around the tree, putting the little orange ones on, putting the little black ones on. You can go further into your tree. You can put them further out on the limb, however you want to do that. Just fill it in to your heart's desire. I also have these little witches hats that I used in another project. They're stickers. They came from Dollar Tree. I just added a few little dots of well, those little table scatters on there. And then I'm putting a little glue on the bottom and just holding it so it will dry on the branch. Now I'm gonna make some little squigglies for the top. I'm out of frame here, but I'm gonna put some steel shots in so you can see what these are being used for. So it's a Chanel stem, I wrapped it around the pick. I'm pulling it out a little bit and then it is going to go on the top where our bow went. So if you look up to the top corner there, you can see these sticking out the top. I'm gonna to make another orange one and then I'm going to make two black ones. You just use a little hot glue and stick it to your bow. So I've looked around my tree and I see a couple little spots that need a little extra, so I'm just adding to it. Now I want to make a pretty base, so I'm using this bucket from the Dollar Tree. I am using this foam block, maybe from the Dollar Tree. I'm not sure where it came from. I'm just going to glue this down, and then I've taken a floral stem and just bent it over like a bobby pin or a hairpin, sticking it through the little hole there in the tree base and holding it down. Until that glue dries, I'm just going to leave it there. I'm going to take some leftover paper that's just actually brown packing paper that came with something we ordered, I think with my Grove, and then two Halloween scarves from Dollar Tree. I'm going to put those inside. Now I want to do a little something extra to that bucket, so I'm going to take some of this mesh that also came from Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut it long enough to tie it to make a pretty little bow. And actually, once I started tying it, I realized you don't even need a bow. It'll curl back on itself and it looks like you've already put some effort into a bow. This is our final result. This thing is so cute and better than I imagined that it would be. I absolutely love it. It fits in perfect with the rest of my decor with my black, orange, and white themes. So I have lots of videos with that. Oh, I can't wait for Halloween. It's just a few days before October and I'm so excited. Who's excited for Halloween? Give me a big thumbs up. I wanna hear it. Comment below so far, what is your favorite Halloween project that we have done on my channel? Be sure you subscribe because I have more coming. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye. All right, so I'm gonna take a pack of this scrapbook paper. You can get any type of scrapbook paper you want. You can get full size. All I had was the minis in the style that I wanted and make a printable. You can go on Pinterest and get free printables or on Google and find some free printables. Just do it on white paper, any font you want. And I have chosen out of my scrapbook pack four of these orange and black plaids. This pack originally came from Target, I believe, the Target um, Bullseye Playground, but I got it at Dirt Cheap. So I'm just going to use a glue stick here on the back and start piecing this together like a puzzle on the back of this sign. When I flip this over later in the video, you'll see the DIY that's on the other side that I did for fall. So you want to line up, try to make sure your pattern is as even as possible. If that sort of thing is important to you, it definitely is to me. So I'm just using my hand to just crimp down the side to give myself a line of where I want this to be. I'm going to add a, a layer of glue to the back 
of the paper and put it on top of the back of the sign that already had the glue on it. I just want to make sure that it stays on here nice for me. And the good thing about a glue stick is you don't have bleed over, you don't have bleed through, there's no bubbling, so it's perfect. Just using my ruler here as a flat edge to smooth this out. And again, I'm crimping the corners, I'm pushing them down with my hands to give myself an idea of where I need to cut and get my lines. They don't have to be exactly straight because I'm going to use a sanding tool to get the edges off to make them even. But I'm just going to cut off the excess next to the edge of the sign. And then I'm using this Dollar Tree sanding block. It is so old, but it is still working great. And I'm just going to angle down and away from the project on the side. And it is going to give me a nice finished, um, a finished edge, very clean edge. And you see here that it's just sanding it and it's just peeling it off. You don't want to pull it because you don't want to pull your paper. But if you have a piece that's just hanging there, you can just gently remove that. And that's really all you have to do all the way around on your edges. This is great for a rustic or farmhouse look. And I don't know why I find it fun to do this, but I really like this. There's something very satisfying about it for sure. I didn't come up with this idea. Lots of crafters do this on YouTube. Okay. Make sure you get it all off there. Now it's nice and smooth. So now I'm going to take my printed picture. I'm going to use my ruler to lay down there and to bend my straight edge. And then take my scissors and cut that off. You can also trim around it to make it whatever size you want. I like that it has a black frame around this, but you don't have to use it. You could make your own frame, you make your own edge, whatever you want. Then once I get it cut down, I'm going to find the placement here and going to take some double stick tape for this. You can get this at any crafter store. You can get it at Walmart and I'm pretty sure you can get double stick tape at Dollar Tree as well. So I just want to center mine down. Now I've decided to take a bow. I will tell you that I tried a couple of other things, just, you know, thought of a couple of other ideas that I might like, but the bow seemed to be the simplest thing for what the look that I was going for. I want to try to finish using some of these ribbons that came from Dollar Tree. So I really love the black, white, and orange for Halloween this year. So I'm cutting 12 inch pieces there's going to be three pieces. Two for the bow and there's going to be one for the tail. So there I just finished off one roll. And actually that last piece might not be quite 12 inches. It looks more like about 8 inches. Just going to twist up a tail there and start working on my bow. So this bow I don't think I've made for you guys before. Simple enough you fold your ends over. You want to overlap one a little bit more than the other. So if you say you overlap one inch, one inch on one ribbon piece, then you want to do two inches on the next one. That's going to leave you a space and you'll see in just a minute where the bows will show both layers a little bit better. So just a little bit of glue here, just a little bit. And you want to make sure that you don't press it all the way down to the other layer. So you see me pull the bow apart to make sure that it dries without sticking to the bottom layer. Because if you do that, you won't be able to fluff your bow. And I want to be able to fluff this out. So I'm just making sure I got my space right there. And I have a smaller ribbon and a larger, larger ribbon segment now. So I'm going to let that one kind of dry also. 
Okay, then I'm going to use some of this pipe cleaner or snail stem, whatever you want to call it. Came from the Halloween section of Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to stack these with the shorter or the smaller one on top. And you see, you can see the bottom layer underneath when they're stacked. That's what you want to do. So I'm going to just pinch and push these together. Then I'm going to take my pipe cleaner, put it over the top, and then twist it in the back. This is going to hold it together nicely. Be sure you get that tight enough that when you fluff it, you don't pull your bows out of there. And that you have enough length left because you're also going to attach the tails on the same piece of wire. What colors do you like for Halloween this year? Are you into the same colors, the uh, traditional colors, or, or what are you into? What do you like? Okay, so I'm just going to open it up, place it right in the middle, and then twist it tight. And there's the little tails. So I am going to dovetail the ends. You've seen this done before, really simple. Cut upward in a triangle. All right, then you're gonna add some glue on the back where it all meets together and place it down on your plaque. You can, of course, if you don't have one, a plaque that's rounded, you can use a rectangle, a square, whatever shape you like. Then I'm just fluffing that out. And there you have it. Pretty little sign. You can sit on your shelf if you have any floating shelves. And there's my project that you saw in my very first or second video. What do you think? So here it is with some more of my Halloween decor. You can see that I have a little theme going here with the black and orange. And I think it fits nicely with that. It definitely, the ribbon matches this wreath. I'll put the, ring, the link <laughs> below for this wreath. Um, this is a Dollar Tree wreath that I made a few videos ago. And they look great together. This would be nice sitting on a shelf with the wreath hanging somewhere in the vicinity of it. Yep. I'm so glad to have you back watching more of my videos. I love the kind comments and support. I hope you subscribe and stick around. And I'll see you again soon. Bye. So I'm starting out with these wood cutouts. They came from uh, Goodwill, I believe. They were definitely thrifted. Any type of scrapbook paper you want to use. If you see here, these are embossed. And I thought these would be nice. But you can use whatever kind you like. This was originally from Target. So I'm going to turn these over and trace them onto the paper. Easy enough. You can do the same thing with the other. I'm going to cut these out carefully. I made sure to push them all the way to the side so I could have some scraps of this paper left so that we can make some leaves. These pumpkins are not perfectly symmetrical and I'm okay with that. Just got to make sure if it's not symmetrical that you're cutting your paper out on the correct side so you get the shape right. I decided to do this two different ways. I'm going to do one of them with a glue gun in case this is the method you want to use to fix it. And then I'll use a glue stick on the other one in case you want to use that one. I will say that these are holding up quite well. So either method works. You could probably use spray adhesive or you could maybe use double stick tape if it's permanent. So here we are with the Elmer's glue stick. 
I'd also use the jock glue stick and they seem to all work about the same. Okay, so the embossed paper pumpkin, this is the first side. Want to do a little something farmhousey with the stem, so I'm just going to use this jute twine, which came from Dollar Tree, and just wrap it around. I want to be sure that it's a solid look, so I'm, you'll see me take my finger and just press it down kind of firmly next to the next layer. You don't have to do it this way. You can leave some spaces and gaps and make it a little more, uh, I don't know, a little more loosely wrapped if you'd like. And I'm just going to get back around and add a little bit of glue and cut it off or vice versa. Don't forget your little finger protectors here. So they look pretty good so far, right? I think that the embossing and the muted colors and the twine give it a farmhouse look. Okay, so now I'm going to just make a leaf a leaf shape. It's probably not a pumpkin leaf shape, but it's still a leaf and it's going on my pumpkin, so it's a pumpkin leaf. And I'm going to trace that on to the black or hold it on there and cut it out so that they are the same. And you can just hot glue those down or use your glue stick, whichever way. And then I want to put some ribbon on the top. These little pieces of ribbon came from the Dollar Tree. I was so happy to find these. It's just almost like a cotton lacy ribbon. Really, I think, pretty and fitting for farmhouse style. Just a little shoelace bow, really simple. And then once you get that in the shape that you like and the the bow fairly symmetrical with the with the loops and the tails being the right length, you can go ahead and put those down with some glue. Once you get to layering like this, hot glue seems to work better to hold it together. So I've chose hot glue for that. Now I've just got these little chipboard fellas. One scarecrow, one mummy, and that's it. Now for the back. I've taken these envelopes that came with Dollar Tree cards for another project and because I don't throw anything away I have these envelopes left. I like this muted orange so I've chosen to use this for both of this other side of the pumpkin. So I'm just putting the decorative side down because remember my pumpkins are not symmetrical I want to get the shape right and I'm just cutting those out Here's the one with the glue stick. The paper is thin for these envelopes, so I just wanted to be sure and see I had a little slip there, but it went right back over. It's the good thing about a glue stick. You have a little time to move around. And then here is the hot glue. And I'm just using my ruler here to even things out. These came off of a banner from Target. I went ahead and glued the first one down with hot glue, and so I'm going to put the word boo on here. I like that it overlaps and it's kind of staggered. I think it's cute like this. And then once it's all down, you'll see me use that marker over there. That's a glass marker that came from Dollar Tree. I love it. It's got 
a long, thin, almost brush tip, and it, it has really good coverage. Really rich, dark black. So see, I'm just filling in those holes, and you really honestly cannot see that there's a hole in there at all now. So think about that when you see banners and, and things that you could repurpose. You can always take them off of your twine and use them for something else. Okay, so I just have some of these, I don't know, I guess they're 3D glittery pieces of stickers. And they came from some scrapbooking stuff that I had years ago. But you can use anything like this. I think there's some things at Dollar Tree that's similar. They might not be 3D, but they'll work. It's just a variety of swirls and squigglies and hearts and leaf, leaves and filigree. You just pick what you like. And so I've decided to use these. Another set of stickers I've had for years. They came from Dirt Cheap. Might have been originally from Target, I'm not sure. And I just want to use some bats on here to make it appear as if they're, the bats have been scared and they're all flying off together. So that's what I was going for in this. Just trying to get my pattern straight. And then I wanted to add some little pumpkins on the bottom. A little hot glue in the middle to hold that one down since it's raised up a little. And then I have this cute ribbon that I got from the thrift store. It's got little ghosts on it and it says boo. I thought this would be the perfect little touch on this side of the pumpkins. So I'm putting them a little bit lower down so when you're using the other side of the pumpkin you don't see it as much. Then I'm just going to take my sanding block from Dollar Tree and sand the edges down at an angle and it leaves this finished edge. And I love it and I think they're precious. Alright guys, I hope you're enjoying the Halloween videos and I hope you come back and subscribe. Be sure to comment if you have any questions below. And thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye. So I'm going to take some jute cord, some scraps of burlap, some scrapbook paper of whatever size, this little Dollar Tree wooden sign, and a thrifted frame. It used to have a picture of a cow on it, but I took the picture off with some fingernail polish remover. Now I'm going to take some of this chalkboard paint. It's black. I'm going to use it to go on the inside of this frame to make it a solid black background. Excuse my voice and my sniffling. If that happens in this video, I do offer my sincerest apologies, but I'm having some allergy issues. And I didn't want to miss the opportunity to get my Halloween videos up because Christmas videos will be coming soon. So I'm just going to edge around here because I want to keep the outside of that galvanized frame showing. You don't have to, you can use whatever frame you want. If you have a frame that's a large enough frame to set your trick-or-treat sign down into, you can paint the entire thing black right over the glass if you choose or you can spray paint it however you wish to do it. I just like the idea since I have a rustic farmhouse theme in my house of having a little bit of that galvanized still showing through. So I'm just going to do two good coats all the way around here. After I made this video, uh, I subscribed to lots of crafters. So I was watching some of the other people that I subscribed to, and I'd be darned if I didn't pull up a video of another crafter, and she had done a trick-or-treat sign with the exact same coloring as mine. So I just want to say I had no intention of copying anybody. I don't want to take credit for being the only person who's ever done this either. Let's just say that artistic minds think alike. Alright, so I've removed the cord from my trick-or-treat wooden sign, 
and placed it down on a piece of paper so that I can begin painting. I'm going to fill in these holes in the top first with some lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree and allow that to dry. This won't be hanging so I won't need a hanger. It's just going to be glued down inside the frame. All right, so you're gonna see a switch in my paint brushes here. I originally started off with this one and it was still a bit too stiff from the last time I used it. If you don't close your plastic bag all the way up and get as much air as possible out of it, your brush will dry out. So I had to wash it and set it aside. And So I'm going to use this brush, which by the way I love. It came in a pack of two, I think, from Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna use my Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint all over this sign. I'm going in the cracks and the corners so I get a solid white coverage. I did two coats and allowed it to dry. Probably could have gotten away with one coat. You could do this in any color that you want. Since I have a farmhouse rustic theme in my house, I thought that the white would be nice against the black. When it's drying, I am going to make the banner for the top. So I am just making a square and then cutting out triangles to use as a pattern for my fabric and my scrapbook paper. So you're just going to pick out whichever types of paper that you like. I think a variety is a better look, but you can use whatever you want. You could use all of the burlap or you could use burlap and checkerboard or whatever you want to use. I've just chosen three different types of papers and then my burlap and I'm going to cut out two of each one. The jute cord is going to be the rope that I glue everything onto. This is why it's good to hang on to scraps because you never know what you might need it for. And this worked out great. This scrapbook paper came from the little pads that come from Target, and I think that every year they have different designs in those little pads. Lay out your pattern the way that you like. And then lay out your twine. Turn each one of those over one at a time and put a bead of hot glue down the edge and just make sure that it's tapped into place and that's all you have to do for that. You can space them out. I have just a tiny bit of space between mine or you can overlap them if you want or you can leave a bigger space depending on the size of your triangles. Now we're going to put the sign down on the frame and I'm going to use hot glue and a little bit of Fix-All, which is the Dollar Tree brand super glue. It's kind of a, a gel in a tube. And make sure I have it centered first and then pop it into place. It's going to take a little while for that fix-all to really get a good grip, so I'm just pressing it down so that the hot glue will hold it until that fix-all 
does what it needs to do. You're going to see me overlay this with a piece of cardboard and then put down my paint can on top to hold everything in place so it doesn't pop up. All right, when it's all said and done and that glue has had a good day to dry, you can come in here and put your banner on the top. Now because I made it big enough where it wouldn't be hanging, I just went ahead and, and glued it down on there. Just a dot of hot glue and a clamp until the glue has set up and then I've trimmed off my rope. So it does hang over the edge just a little. I really felt like I needed something else here so I went back and colored these pumpkins orange. So I used a orange with a dot of brown. This is burnt umber and pumpkin orange. They are acrylic paints. Mix those well together and then I got a little flat edge brush and applied them carefully to my pumpkins. It's up to you. If you like a brighter orange, go ahead and just use the plain orange. I needed it just a little bit darker. So I'm just carefully going in there and making sure that I'm only getting the top surface. I'm not bothering going around the edges and all that because it should just be too easy at this point to make a mistake and mess up my black background. So I'm just being sure to go and just tap that and put that on the top. Now I want to put the natural curves of a pumpkin in the bottom, so I'm just making some little curves here. You can make yours flat or whatever you want to do there. One solid curve, whatever. Just being sure to get just enough on there that I don't leave streaks, streaks, but I also do not want to blob it on and make a mistake that I can't fix or I can't easily fix. And you can fix anything with paint pretty much, but I don't want to do that. Just, I'd rather be careful and do it right the first time. So now I have my little orange pumpkins with my white words. If you wanted to, you could go in there with a black marker or some black paint and separate your letters and separate the tops of the pumpkins and you know that sort of thing if you really wanted it to stand out more. But I, I like the idea of it looking just, you know, rustic and simple. And it fits in really well with the rest of my black, white, and orange Halloween decor. So there's my Halloween tree that I did in a previous project. And there's my sign. There's a shadow box sign that I've done recently. I've actually done two shadow boxes for this Halloween 2020 series. Be sure that you check out the Halloween series playlist so that you can catch up on everything that we've done. Because there are not very many more Halloween videos coming. And then we'll be going on straight into Christmas. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed doing it for you. Thanks for stopping by and I hope you subscribe so you can see more projects. We'll see you again soon. Bye. All right, so I'm gonna take a Dollar Tree witch hat form. I'm gonna take a piece of white board that came from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna trace out the cone top part. 
and I'm going to be cutting that out. I want to give some structure to this thrifted piece of burlap scrap that I have here. And I don't want you to be able to see through it, so this is going to make it opaque. We're just going to lay the form on top. I'm going to make a little slit for the bottom. You don't have to do this. You could cut it all flush if you wanted, but I think this will give it a little more room to make it stick down. And I don't want anything coming loose in case it's outside. So I'm going to take some just regular old tape and tape everything in place. You could use any type of adhesive that you wanted. You could use hot glue, you could do all that, but I just didn't feel like the mess today. So this tape did the job perfectly. So now we have the top structure for our witch's hat. I'm gonna take this scrap here and just glue that down. Now I'll be trimming up so I don't have too much bulk on the back of this. Be sure, since it's not glued down, that it's not slipping over where you don't have enough to glue down. There's one little space where I, I really pushed it. Cut it a little too short. But I made it work. See that little corner? Not very much to stick down there. But learn from my mistake. Now I'm just protecting my fingertips. Because this glue is really, really hot, you can use a little spatula or a stick or anything like that. Just be sure that you don't get your fingers on this. The burlap is, has lots of little holes in it and that glue will bubble right through there and get you. All right, I'm just using a clamp to hold that in place and it worked fine. Then I'm gonna take these pipe cleaners. These are the black ones from Dollar Tree in the Halloween section. And I'm going to be marking this mesh at 10 inches. I'm going to show you how I make my first roll. The black and white check, or a buffalo check, is actually out of the Christmas section, so that was pretty cool. And it feels like a better quality than this Halloween mesh. I should have gotten more for sure. So I'm just rolling this. It's about the diameter. The tubes are ending up about the diameter of a quarter. I'm just going to roll these together and put the rough side down, and then there you go. There's the bundle. All right. I'm going to make little pom-poms to put on my wreath, and as usual, I'm slightly out of frame over there. All you do is take a couple of feet of it and wrap it around your hand. Then you're going to slip it off. You're going to take a piece of pipe cleaner or string or jute cord or whatever you want to use, even floral wire, if that's what you want it to use. And you're going to wrap around about an inch on the bottom. All right. To do that good and tight because you're going to be cutting here in a minute. All right, you just go through the bottom and cut it, and there you go. It'll just puff right out for you. Going to make several of these. I think I ended up with three or four of these. Cutting through the bottom loop there, bluffing it out, and then just trimming off the, to make it even. Okay, so I have a bunch of those little bundles. You know, you've seen me use those before. They just have the little pipe cleaner around them. And you're going to start filling up the bottom all around the brim of this witch's hat. Play around with it. Move them around. There's really no rhyme or reason to where you put these bundles as long as you don't have any empty spots. And I didn't like how those lined up, so I'm just moving that down to the next row. If you get enough on there, they won't move around on the wire. If you if they're sliding around, then you don't have enough in there. So just keep adding them, get it thick, and just keep going with it. I think I ended up making probably, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, probably 15 of these. 
but you know, you can just make more if you need to make more. And I just alternated with the orange, the checkerboard, and the black. You do that all the way to the end. Then I'm going to use these little pom-poms that I made with um, the sheer fabric. And just poking those in there randomly. Oh, she's dropping by a little early. I'm not done with your hat yet. And just place them wherever you want to. Now we're going to work on the hat band. This witch has to have a band on her hat. So I'm going to start off with the Dollar Tree ribbon on the bottom. So far everything we've used has come from the Dollar Tree with an exception of the burlap. So just trying to decide where I want this and I want it high enough up that it's not sitting in the mesh tubes down there because then I won't be able to see it. So again, safety first, protect your fingers. This ribbon coordinates very nicely with the, the rest of the little, the bottom of the hat there. Okay, so I'm going to take this black and white chevron ribbon and I'm going to put that on the top. It's not quite as wide, so you can still see the ribbon that's underneath it. You can see the pattern pretty well. I'm just going to glue that one down right in the center of it. And then I'll trim it up to make it look neater. This would obviously be put on a solid wall or door. If you have a glass door, you're going to want to do something else to cover up the back. Maybe wrap the entire thing in burlap, put the band all the way around. Now this is just a little sign that I have that I got ages ago. And I'm going to make a little bow to put next to it. So I want that little blackboard sign to be a an adornment for the witch's hat. And it's just, it's wood. It's kind of lightweight. So I've just made a little makeshift bow here. I'll add a third, lip, uh, third loop shortly. And put some hot glue down on here. All right, and now we're gonna make a little bow for the top. You can see two 12 inch pieces with the piece of that mesh tubing there. Gonna wrap it with a pipe cleaner. I'm going to use this on the end of the hat, right up there on the tip. So I just chose some of these 3D stickers that I've had in my scrapbook pile and I've put that down in the center of my little embellishment there on the hat band. Now I'm using some of this base filler to add a couple of little bubbles here and there. Forgive my dog. The yard people are here. She's not happy about it. Okay, so you see the little bow on the end? I just took the bow that we made and then I stuck a little one of those pom-poms right in the center of it. And then I'm going to put one of these little balls right in the center of that. Fluff everything out. Make sure that you have a good representation of all of your colors there. You don't want anything mashed down or disappearing. And then to hang it, I'm just going to use a pipe cleaner with hot glue and a little piece of scrap paper. And just made a little loop there like a hairpin. and secure that down. This little witch's hat is going to fit in wonderfully with the rest of my orange black 
and white theme for Halloween 2020. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll go get one of these before they disappear so you can do your own craft. Thanks for watching. Be sure you subscribe for more and I'll see you again soon. Bye. All right, so I'm just going to take this little wreath that I thrifted from Goodwill. I'm going to add some black chalkboard paint that came from Target. Of course, you know I got it from Dirt Cheap. I'm gonna remove the cording. And I'm going to just clean this off. Give it a good little sand and then wipe the residue off and then use my foam brush to give it a coat of the paint. I gave it one coat, let it dry, and then gave it one more coat and let that dry thoroughly also. So I'm going to take this sanding block from the Dollar Tree and just go around the edges. I should have been a little bit neater. I got some on the sides, but that's okay. And I'm gonna take some sparkly stickers that I've had forever. You can get stickers from anywhere, Dollar Tree, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, anywhere you want. I'm just gonna use my ruler here to help me get a close to straight line and put out my word spooky on here. It's not perfect, but you know, nothing really is in crafting and that's okay. It make, makes it unique and personal. I'm okay with that. We shouldn't beat ourselves up about the small things, right? Give yourself some grace. Okay, and believe it or not, I pretty much got the measurements right there. Yay for me. All right, so these came from Target um, last year and I actually got those from Dirt Cheap this year. Just going to place them down gently so I can see where I want everything to go. I do this with almost every project I do. I don't always start off with a clear idea in my head of what I want to do. I just get some things together and just play around till I find what feels right. Also, the little broom that you see there came in a pack from Dirt Cheap that originally came from Target. And there's some stickers from the same sheet that I used on my reversible pumpkins. Just trying to decide what I want to do here. So this little bat is going to make a cute hat band for the witch's hat. You don't have to use these wood stickers or 3D stickers. You can use whatever you have, whatever you want. I'm going to use a little hot glue here. I did cut that broomstick down some so that it would fit on the plaque. Just pulling off the spider webs. I guess I could have left them since it's the witch's broom. All right, these are 12 inch strips of some random ribbon. And I'm gonna fold them in half so that I have six inch pieces. I'm just gonna make a little stacked bow there to go on the top. You've seen me make these before. This is so easy. You don't have to put them in order, but again, in my mind, it makes more sense if I do this, so I do it. Take a piece of string and just bunch them up toward the center and tie a few knots to make sure that it is secure and trim off your excess. Now I'm just pulling those apart some, fluffing them out a little bit, and that's going to be the top, and it is going to cover up the hole that I have in the top of that plaque where the hanger originally was. So I'm just putting it around there and pressing it right down.
You want to be sure that you're holding that still if you're fluffing your bow or you will pull it right off if it's not glued down yet. Okay, so I put a little pumpkin sticker right in the center with some hot glue. You didn't see that part. And then I'm taking the letters E, E, K to put eek on the bottom. There she goes. All right, then I've taken a chalk marker here and I'm just making little dots around to sort of frame this out. I think it looks cute with the, the polka dot ribbon that I have on the top. I think it coordinates well and it just makes it stand out a little bit. Gives it a little extra something. Just little dots. These don't have to be perfect. You can do dots, X's, little slashes, or you can just leave them alone and just be done with it. All right, so I still felt like I needed a little more. So I'm just going to put some little dots around my words and around the other stickers. It just makes it a little more personal and it turns out really adorable. So I don't like the scary stuff for Halloween. I like the cute stuff, I like the, the happy stuff, the cheerful festive stuff. Yeah, so that's it. That's the final right there. You can put your little piece of cord on the back so you can hang it and you're good to go. Be sure you subscribe, I've got more coming. Thanks for watching and give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying these Halloween videos. I'll see you soon. Bye.